Yeah, we're about to eat that in a second. Yeah. I would have preferred it to even be a little more sour. Oh. Crazy! Yeah, I... Oh. Oh. Crazy! Yeah, I, the only down... Growing up Chinese American, I had never met a person from the northeast of China, AKA Dongbei. And as of 2005, there was only one Dongbei restaurant in America. Today, there's over 70. People from the northeast are known to drink a lot, they're animated, they're a little rowdy, and they're also tall. Those don't sound like your standard Hollywood stereotypes. So we're sitting down with our China expert friend, Di Zhao, to have a fancy Dongbei village feast fit for a chief of nomadic herdsmen. Fish stews, sour cabbage, large geese, corn biscuits, candied yams, and jelly noodles. And if that sounds interesting, that's because there's influences from Mongolia, North Korea, and Russia. So we're gonna show you why you might wanna check out Dongbei food next time you have a chance. All right, everybody, we're about to start our crazy Dongbei feast. We have so much food on the table. We got Daniel with us. It feels like we're in a bathhouse with all this steam going on, right? I mean, look at the size of this pot. Like, you can bathe in this. But listen, Daniel, just tell us what we're looking at, because I'm, I'm trying to eat. This is a stewed fish. It's a tie We got three fish in there. We got tofu, corn, see some dates. I mean, this is quintessential Dongbei, because Dongbei people love to stew things. Right, right, in the right. winters. The cold winters of Dongbei. You serving it up? Let's I'm get serving it. it up. Yo, I don't know if these paper bowls can really hold up with the hot stew. Uh, you know, you go to a Dongbei restaurant, you're going to have a good time, because uh, most of the time, you're going to be drinking. Like, Dongbei people love to drink. There's a lot of baijiu in Dongbei. Drinking culture. I mean, Look at this, this food, like Jigu Jia, right? Famous for being a drinking food. Yeah, you go to a Dongbei restaurant, most of the time you go to a big, go with a big group. Uh -huh. You're not gonna take a date to a Dongbei restaurant unless she's really down to eat. Right. Unless she's a, a Dongbei girl. Unless she's a Dongbei girl. <laughs> Let's, so let's start off with the fish stew. This is like a Chinese dish I've never so, seen before. Dongbei fish stew. Tie guo dun guo yu. Wow. I just feel like a nomadic herdsman. The fish is fresh. Wow. Yeah. Man. The fish is fresh. Dude, I mean, this is food too. is some earthy, hearty, down home Ooh. cooking. Guz actually remind me a little bit of uh, Korean salangtang. I'll tell you this, guys. Immediately, what you guys will notice about Dongbei food is it doesn't look like much. It looked cool when it was cooking, but now that we started eating it, it just looks like a pot in the <laughs> ground. <laughs> hey, I know it was good, though, because the chef back there, the main chef, he was taking it really seriously. We have covered Northeastern Chinese food on our channel before, but these are definitely things that I've never had. In the this other pot, we got a tie guo dun da le, which is pot stewed goose. This is not duck, this is not pork, this is not chicken, this is goose. Look at that. This sort of fits in with the narrative about Dongbei because they eat a lot of like game meat. We got to notice on the side of the pot, there's a tie bi. It's like, yeah, it's like steamed cornbread. It's like the Chinese cornbread. Dongbei cornbread, tie bi. You gotta hit the stew and it, dip that in there. It, it's not, it's not, I'm not gonna lie guys, it's not that fire without the stew. Yeah. By itself, the cornbread doesn't do that much, but I love the texture. In Dongbei, they don't, you know, if you call your bro, you don't call him a, a gum or you call him a lao tie. Once you get past going to Dongbei, it's a lao tie. Right. So you're saying in Dongbei, they got next level broism. Where they're not even using the regular term for bro, they're just they're using their own term. The more north in China you would go, the more you would fit in with like Bronk. There's all these potatoes in here. I didn't even give it to you guys. I'm sorry. I'm not being a good Lao Tia. <laughs> Be a more Lao Lao Tia. Pot stewed goose. Tia Guo Dun Da Le. Oh, you gotta get a lot of sauce with this. Mm, okay. That flavor is a little bit more similar to other things I've had. Dude, the goose is such a large bird that for a second you're confusing it with like, is this pork? That's a good ass point. The, <laughs> the meat pieces are huge. Are huge. Like, I mean, look at this goose. It has a strong star anise flavor, mm. but it's uh, actually a tiny bit spicy. I'm the chief of this Dongbei village. I'll do uh, what I want. Man, imagine if we were about to go to the Harbin Ice Festival after this. That'd be sick. No. Uh, we have this corn juice. I've never had this. It's warm in my hand right now. Daniel, explain what corn juice is. It's called a juice, but it's far from a juice. In, in the Western world, we know corn syrup. A lot of yeah. things are made out of corn, but that's like the sugary yeah. thing, but yeah. All right, you guys, for me, between the first two Dongbei stews that we had, I'm actually going with the fish. I yeah, thought the fish was like more advanced tasting. I think it's the uh, Southern half in you speaking. I'm gonna roll with that fish as well. No, that was definitely one of the best stews I've had. Damn, I feel like I'm in the village for real. So, Andrew, what you rolling with? I gotta go roll with the stew fish, man. Yeah. I think the tiebing is a must, though. Goose. Goose. You know, guys, I know that this is a start to a good Dongbei meal because I've already done something very wild and unkempt. 
five color noodle. noodle. Got a lot of pee. Man, I love it because this this is kind of like a noodle salad, and it has like the strong sesame flavor. It's a little bit spicy. Like I can see why uh, Dongbei people are so big because they're eating so much food. Well, There's... let's just say this: you guys know Pang Dai. A lot of Dongbei guys actually look like Pang Dai. Hey, Pang Dai is not Dongbei though. It's Hubei. I feel like Dongbei people respect Pang Dai. <laughs> Dongbei people, <laughs> they see them as one of their own. I would say for for the the meals that I know of in terms of Dongbei food, this is a must get because it balances out with everything else. It's like cold kind of spicy but smooth dish mm -hmm. and I think it's so different than everything else here so you got to have that to balance out the meal. This is probably the most underrated dish in the entire Chinese cuisine. That's a big statement. Like uh, on the streets a lot of people just eat this as a meal. You just get a lapi and that's lunch. Yeah, in fact it wouldn't surprise me if Hayashi Chuka was based off Mu Thai lapi. Just to rate the three dishes that we've had so far for the fish pot I'm gonna give it a four out of five. The goose I'm gonna give a 3.5 out of five and the Wu Thai lapi a five. This is a five out of five dish to me. Three, three veggies. veggies Di San Shin. Mm. They are not playing around <laughs> with how oily that is. <laughs> I always felt like eggplant was an underrated vegetable. Eggplant has a very unique flavor. Yeah. Heavily used emoji though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the goose pot is burning. Frank, help us out. As the liquid has all evaporated, you know, they have to pour in more soup to kind of replenish it, just like a hot pot. Dude, reminds me of watching Trevor James and Food Ranger. Don't bake pork, pork ribs. ribs. Oh, we're doing the hands? Yes. yes. Yo, this is true. I always ask for this. I don't care if nobody else wants it. <laughs> I'm getting this. Yeah. This is my sleeper pick out of these five. This is my number one pick. <laughs> I don't care. Authentic <laughs> sweet and sour, sour pork, pork. guo bao rou. This is the classic. My, my favorite don't bake dish, the guo bao rou. All right, for me, I like that. And I know that that's Liaoning style. But for me, I actually like the Harbin style the most. Sauce on the Harbin style is more clear. Some people think, Andrew, that Guo Bao Rou is the authentic root of actually sweet and sour pork. I gotta say, if this is a traditional recipe, it does look like it. This is my number one pick. I gotta go on to the Jigu Jab. Can I say that right? Jigu Jab, yeah, yeah. I, I know some of the dishes. Human, Human chicken, chicken wrap. wrap. Jigu Jab. Yo, this one's really right. good. This might have been one of the best versions I had in America. This one tastes like it's like less at a drinking spot and more at like a fancy restaurant. You know what I love is that the meat doesn't look juicy at all, but when you bite into it, it still has some of that moisture. Oh. All right, last but not oh, least, shit. guys. Oh, you got something in your eye? I got some cumin you in my eye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Don't rub your eyes when you're eating Jigu Jab. Candy yams. Pasta Oh my God. Would you agree with me? I would say this is very much unlike anything else in any other part of China. It's almost like a crazy street food that's a restaurant food. That's the best one I've had, man. That's the best pasta du I've ever had. It's super sweet and it's cooked so soft and the outside is crispy. Oh my god. I'm surprised the steak this crispy. That is the best pasta du I've ever had personally. Yeah, oh, wow, I want to eat more. Oh, man. Put it away. Put it away. All right, of that round, I think the Basa di Gua was definitely like the best compared to the versions I've had before. Yeah. But for me, like I said, my personal sleeper pick, and a lot of people don't pick this one, is the Zhang Da Gu Dong. A lot of people go against yeah. me when I say that. Yeah. Daniel's <laughs> against the blue collar simple braids. For me, it's the, the Basa di Gua, because I didn't expect it to taste good after we like left it out for a little bit. No, because a lot of places, uh, it's not good. But I guess that speaks to the quality that they cook things here at Happy Village. You get a cumin chicken rack, and you get those candy yams, you're set. Round two. Cucumbers, Cucumbers with, with bean, bean paste. Huang Guad and Dajiao. Mmm. Nice little butt cleanser. Turn it tastes it. slightly different than the Korean version. Like, yeah. like maybe like 25% different. This one. What is this appetizer? I've never had this before. It's a gelatin mixed with pork skin, like pork wow. rice. Ah, and you get this dip with it, right? Yeah. Okay, it's super soft. Really what, soft I've right. never had this before. I think I've always seen this on the menu and not got it. Pork, pork skin, skin gelatin. Pido. Let me just tell you this though. It probably wouldn't be my go-to regardless. It yeah. kind of tastes like, you know, that Sichuan pork belly yeah. biro dish. Yeah. I don't know, it's interesting. I would actually say that that was, to be honest, better than I thought, but I probably still would not order it on my own. It's like not my favorite dish, but I'll eat it sometimes. Dude, I can't believe you would say that and then diss the Zhang Gu <laughs> The Zhang Gu is the same thing as that, but just 700% better. <laughs> All right, moving on, you guys. We got the Ma Hua, of course. Oh, this is freshly fried. It's like twirled twice. Oh my gosh. It almost looks like a Auntie Anne's pretzel. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get it. Ma Hua. Oh. Mmm. It does really feel like a pretzel, kind of. Yeah. That's one of my favorite Ma Hua that I've ever had. This is bready. This is like a bready Ma Hua. Mm -hmm. David, the, the other ones uh, will pop up a picture of the other Ma Hua's we had with Richie, and they were almost look more like donuts. Xiao Ji Duan Mo Gu. Woo! 
It looks kind of like a Huang Menji. This is probably better than Huang Menji. I, I think wow. it's No, no, wow. Daniel. Daniel's no, 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 always no, no, dissing no, no. on the Huang Menji. No, no, no. Chicken, chicken wild, wild mushroom, mushroom stew. Xiao Jitun Mo. Man, I'm about to eat the chicken. Go check out the vermicelli. It's, so oh. it's not better than Huang Menji. It's good. It is not better than Huang Menji. No, <laughs> no way. It's, it's not, not as good as Huang Menji. Even though I don't like Huang Menji. You know what it is? This tastes very homemade. Probably the most homemade out of all the dishes that we had. Maybe this tied with the fish pot. I would say that this stew tastes a little bit more medicinal. It doesn't hit you almost like a restaurant dish. This by far took me most to like a Dongbei village. The more I eat it, the more I like it. Yeah. I almost yeah. want to say it's the most addictive of any stew that we've had. Yeah, because we're like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't that good. It's not as good as well, my G. And then just, oh, just, I just keep eating this. Might have to revise my feelings, <laughs> my initial feelings on this. There's a reason why this thing's a classic. Hey guys, overall, 4.5 out of yeah. 5. Overall. Hold up, hold up. Please, attention to this stew. I have the sour cabbage stew right here. And we have pork rib, we have pork belly slices. Wow! Flip it over, flip it over. Sour, sour cabbage, cabbage with, with pork. Sun Tai Dong Bai Does not disappoint. Man. I don't know. Swan. The swan is strong. Yeah. You know why you like the sour cabbage so much? Right. And I'll tell you. Because when we went to your house <laughs> and we had chowzas one time, you had a whole big stack of dumplings and then we just ate it with black vinegar. Just black vinegar. So your tolerance for it is probably much higher than even ours. I would say this is reaching the limits for me personally. I would like <laughs> not want it any more sour. I would have preferred it to even be a little more sour. Oh. Crazy! Yeah, I... Oh. Oh. Crazy! Yeah. I, the only down... This is like some sour Jeez, cabbage soup. I would have said, like, yeah, my, my this is like you poured a bunch of ascorbic acid in here. <laughs> my comment was like, I wish this would have been a little more sour. Dude, that's why you don't like Huang Menji, because Huang Menji don't got enough vinegar yes. in it. But you know what? Every individual's taste buds is not the same. All right, you guys, before we get into some deep cut Dongbei culture talk, uh, let's talk just about the food that we had. Man, the, the biggest surprise for me is probably the Basa Di Gua. I wish I had that piece earlier before it got cold. Earlier. But even cold, it was really good. Yeah, even cold, it was really good. Just the sweet potato was like perfectly ripe. Perfectly fried. Yeah, you're right. There was something about the Basa Di Gua that it was more Basa Di Gua than the other Basa Di Guas I've had prior. Yeah. It was the most Basa Di Gua of the Basa Di Guas. For me, it was uh, the tilapia fish pot and then the chicken pot. I think for the fish pot, I kept wanting to drink the broth. Yeah. And then for this, I wanted to eat everything. Those two dishes tasted the most homemade to me. Mm. Of the four pots, what was your favorite pot? I'm gonna go with this one, chicken mushroom. Wow. Or it was either tied between this and the fish. Because it I was reminded just you of Huang Menji. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Any type of Huang Menji, yeah. sign me up. I'm really wavering between the fish pot earlier and the goose pot. But oh. just because I hadn't had that much goose before, I think I got to roll with the goose pot. That was my first time cleaning off like an entire goose leg. Aren't right, you guys, we have an entire section dedicated to some just Dongbei talk. Well, you know what they call talking in Dongbei? Lao ke. Lao ke, it means literally sit around and shoot the shit. I know you were saying a lot of people that are popular live streamers right now in mainland China are from Dongbei. Yeah, I mean, the entertainment industry in China is populated by Dongbei talent. A Chinese YouTuber will most likely be somebody from Dongbei. Uh, why, why are Dongbei people generally so expressive and such like uh, good entertainers? <laughs> so I heard this theory and I, I, I think it's probably true is because uh, they're going back to the, the temperature in the region, right? Dongbei has like seven months of the year is like the dead of winter. Right. You're not gonna go outside, you're not gonna do any farm work, you're gonna be at home with your family chilling, what are you gonna do? You're sitting around the, the fireplace and you're just like talking. Oh. So they, they they are so used to just roasting each other, cracking jokes, cause that's the form of entertainment you'd have if you're home. Like whatever you think of as like Jay Chow and like Wang Li home, yeah. like Dongbei people are very much more like Hong Hua Hui. Dongbei people are like least shy about meeting new people, going to new places. Yeah. They just feel so different than any other Chinese in America. And the reason why we're even talking about Dongbei people is because there's enough Dongbei people in the big cities where you're just like, yo, these Chinese people are a little different. Yeah, I guess for me, the reason that it's so important to talk about Daniel is because like a lot of people who are only familiar, I guess, with like one type of Chinese, you know, if you just stay in like the Chinese American world, you're, you're gonna meet like just maybe the bottom half, which is cool. But I think it's also good to know that there are other attitudes. There are like, 
big guys that just like sit outside and eat char. When people think about Chinese Americans, I would like for them to consider Dongbei people and Sichuan people as part of the conversation. For many years, it was just like Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Taiwan. But now, when you meet these young Chinese, man, a lot of them are from Dongbei. Please make sure you give us a thumbs up, a like, subscribe. Huge shout out to D Zhao. In the comments down below, let us know what your favorite region of China is. And big shout out to Happy Valley Village Restaurant in Hacienda Heights. Man, they took care of us. They gave us such an amazing experience. And uh, until next time. Hey, hey, real quick, Daniel. Is it crazy to see Beijing tier experiences start to really pop up in America? Yeah, we gotta go get trials next time. Oh, it's right at the end of this plaza. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that video. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Yo, John. What up? Mongol John. I'm just eating away, man. I'm just. John, you did find out you're part Mongolian. John, you gotta eat all those dishes at once. Come on. Move them in. Come on. I got you. No, just. Yeah, yeah, pasta. Yeah, pasta. Come on. I get the. 10, 9, 8. Oh, yeah. That's. Yeah. How dumb is this? 4, 3, 2. I feel like he needs just like a glass of. Ah! Now you gotta light your cigarette with your finger. And just like pour all the liquor into one glass. Did you try? Like, did you try this corn? Juice? Do the tornado beer. Shit. I don't even gotta say a word. Just gotta. Yo, Frank. Say something to the camera real quick. Peace. Hi. Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. How's that corn juice? It hits my soul. <laughs> okay. John. Hey, there you go. You didn't say. Hey. John. John is definitely from the eastern part of Inner Mongolia.